All right. So here um, we're dealing with a tumor that's in the peritoneal cavity of a young uh, boy. And it's extending back into the retroperitoneum. In this case, you can see we've got an adrenal gland right here. And this is a small round blue cell tumor. You can see it's made of round blue cells, kind of uniform in their appearance. And the way the round blue cells, you know, there's a wide, a wide list, a long list of uh, round blue, malignant round blue cell tumors. Um, and it's good to learn about those. Sometimes there are some diagnostic clues microscopically. Other times you have to use immunohistochemistry and molecular to sort them out. But this is one of those uh, cases that has a very distinct appearance. In this case, the, the most important thing is that the round blue cells are arranged in these little islands or nests almost that are surrounded by this desmoplastic fibrous and vascularized stroma that divides the blue cells into these little nests and islands. So when you see nests and islands of blue cells surrounded by desmoplastic stroma in the abdominal or pelvic cavities of a young male, that's classic for desmoplastic small round cell tumor. That's actually the name of this entity, desmoplastic small round cell tumor. It has a, a strong male predominance, usually uh, young adults or kids, and um, in the abdominal peritoneal area or the pelvis. Unfortunately, these are very bad, aggressive tumors. Uh, but they have a very distinct appearance because of their growth pattern. I would say the one other thing that I can sometimes consider is, um, is the solid variant of alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma can look a good bit like this because you can have these nodules of small round blue cells that are divided by fibrous um, uh, stroma forming these kind of septations. So do keep that in mind. Um, the uh, immunostain pattern is kind of broad and variable for desmoplastic small round cell tumor. A lot of different stains have been reported in this tumor, but I'll tell you the most important ones. The most important take home is that there's co-expression usually of keratin or EMA plus desmin. So keratin and desmin expression, which is not a very common combination, but you can see that here. Um, I will point out though to remember that rhabdomyosarcomas, which are desmin positive, sometimes have keratin expression also, particularly the alveolar form. So don't mistake those, okay? Keratin and EMA expression, co-expression with desmin. Um, and then also um, WT1 will have nuclear staining, uh, with, with the C-terminus WT1. So WT1 has both an N-terminus and a C-terminus, and you, it's important to know which antibody you're using in your lab because the one that's specific here that you're supposed to see is the C-terminus um, WT1. So make sure that the antibody that you're using actually detects the C-terminus, not the N-terminus, and it'll be nuclear WT1 expression. Now I'll tell you, I've seen cytoplasmic WT1 expression in a wide range of different things. I'm not really sure what, if anything, that ever means, but what we're looking for here is nuclear WT1. C-terminus WT1, okay? And also do remember that like many uh, small round cell tumors throughout the body. CD99 is often positive in this. So um, as my mentor Sharon Weiss once told me, CD99 is a smart, is a marker of small round blueness. And she was just joking, but I think her point's well taken that you can see CD99 in lymphomas and you can see it in Ewing sarcoma and in other Ewing-like round cell sarcomas. You can see it in desmoplastic small round cell tumor. Lots of things can have CD99 expression. So it's a, a very sensitive marker of Ewing's, but it is not at all specific. And that's really, really important that you know that. Um, so you can use not CD99, but do not trust it alone to help you dot, to tell you that something's Ewing's versus other small round, uh, small round blue cell tumors, okay? And finally, the reason WT1 is positive in this tumor is because molecularly this tumor has a translocation of the EWSR1 gene and the WT1 gene. So the Ewing's gene, EWSR1, and WT1 are fused together here. Okay, so an important thing to think about is that remember the Ewing's gene, EWSR1, is rearranged in a lot of different tumors. It's a very commonly rearranged gene in soft tissue pathology and even sometimes outside of soft tissue pathology. So if you were, if you were wondering here between Ewing sarcoma and desmoplastic small round cell tumor, 
fish for the Ewing's gene with a break-apart probe is not going to answer that question for you because it's going to be positive for a break-apart in both of those tumors, okay? So you have to be able to either fish for the other gene or use RT-PCR. So it's really important when you're thinking about molecular testing and soft tissue pathology or anywhere that you know about what abnormality you're looking for. Is it a fusion? Is it a mutation? Is it an amplification? And also that you think about the other things in the differential and if they might have some similarities in the molecular abnormality that they have. And, and then, then you can figure out the best testing modality. So I, could, I would either use a, if I wanted to do a test here to prove this, I would either use a double probe uh, fish that's got a, a probe for EWSR1 and another probe for WT1, so a dual break apart, or I would do RT-PCR that would find the EWSR1, WT1 transcript. Um, and so those are the ways that I would approach that to molecularly confirm these. So desmoplastic small round cell tumor, a, a good example of a really terrible disease, unfortunately.